live from our 7 Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Tom Johnson begins now. Good evening everyone. Tasmanians are tonight breathing a sigh of relief after a Hobart man believed to have coronavirus has returned negative test results. The potentially deadly virus has however taken a toll on our export market as precautionary measures are put in place to stop the illness from spreading. Despite a scare earlier this week, Tasmania is yet to see its first case of coronavirus. Yesterday, a man was admitted to the Royal Hobart Hospital for tests after returning from a trip to the Wuhan region, where the outbreak began, with mild respiratory symptoms. His results came back negative today, but the impacts of the illness are trickling into the state in a different way, hurting our economy. Late last week uh, we received notice from some of our exporters that uh, their orders have been cancelled into China to do with the coronavirus. The orders from China were cancelled virtually overnight. The Chinese New Year is one of the busiest times for commercial cray fishermen. They've spent days out on boats catching their allocated quota and have been hit hard by the recent restrictions, leaving them unable to move their product. They're now relying on local support, settling the rock lobsters below market value in an attempt to cover costs. We're getting $85 a kilo and for the bigger fish we're getting um, upwards of I think $90, $95 a kilo. So we're currently selling our smaller fish for anything under a kilo for um, $70 a kilo and anything over a kilo we're selling for $80 a kilo. So that's just a break even. Internationally, there have been more than 2,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus, resulting in more than 50 deaths with numbers rising. In Australia, four people have been diagnosed, with more currently awaiting test results. But there is hope, with affected areas in China under lockdown to prevent the illness from spreading further, and vaccines are currently being developed, including one by an Australian team of researchers. Uh, we're excited to be part of the uh, global effort uh, to develop preventative strategies uh, to hopefully curtail uh, an ongoing epidemic. Experts say there's no reason to panic about the spread of coronavirus across the state. Infection prevention and control precautions are in place, with those undergoing testing kept in isolation while awaiting results. It, this is a uh, watch, wait and see uh, scenario. The, um, uh, we haven't seen any local transmission from the introduced cases in any of the other countries that we've seen it so far. The isolation has been effective. Anyone who has recently returned from China displaying symptoms of a fever and cough are urged to contact medical authorities. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanians from all walks of life, from medicine to tourism and community service, have today been recognised with Australia Day honours. It's one of our nation's highest awards, with passionate recipients across the state both thankful and humbled by the acknowledgement. This is where Peter McDermott feels at home, behind the wheel of the coach company he started 40 years ago. We started with a 1958 Bedford school bus and we've had a few opportunities along the way and taken those opportunities and uh, today I think we've got over 60 buses and probably up around 100 staff seasonally. Today his services to Tasmania's transport and tourism sectors saw him awarded an Australia Day honour. I'm very passionate about Tasmania and what we've got to show off and I spend a lot of my time away promoting Tasmania. One of many Tasmanians recognised, among them our top police officer, Commissioner Darren Hine, awarded for his services to law enforcement. And for recipients like Jim, he spent his whole life working for his Glenorchy community, awarded for his time spent potentially saving lives through defensive driving courses. Look ahead and create a bit of space around yourself. Be aware of what's ahead of you, what's behind you and what's on either side. For her services to conservation and the environment, scientist Sarah Lloyd was thanked for her passion for slime moulds. But for this Rosevears doctor, he spent much of his time overseas. John Wettenhalls travelled far and wide to improve water, sanitation and medical programs for countries in need. If we don't help people around this country, particularly in the Pacific, um, we're going to have bigger headaches than we might otherwise have. So, I mean, it works both ways. Starting in the 1960s, it's a passion for adventure that's kept Richard Bennett just as determined to capture the perfect shot. A veteran photographer of the Sydney Hobart Yacht Race, awarded for his services to photography. 
I enjoy the weather and the elements. Uh, I love adventure. Um, I'm interested in aviation and uh, photography enabled me to combine all of those elements. Tourism heavyweight Robert Annals recognised for his dedication to hospitality and just as Tasmania lives through another summer of bushfires, Bishano's Douglas Renshaw, a member of the local RSL and a volunteer firefighter of three decades, was thanked for his services to the community. These are just some of the long list of Tasmanians who've dedicated their lives to enriching the state they love. Thanked by all Australians. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Hundreds of Tasmanians, young and old, have headed outdoors to bask in Australia Day celebrations across the state. For many, today was extra special, marking their first day in a new life as Australian citizens. On the coastline, there were kids coits and tennis, but nothing says Australia Day like a sizzling sausage on the barbecue. Hundreds getting a taste of our national cuisine at Gravelly Beach for a free community celebration. We want a free family fun day where the parents can take their kids and it costs them nothing unless they want to feed them. The local fire brigade taking a break from a busy season, the only heat today was served in the coffees. It's great being an Australian, living in a lovely place that we do. Whether trotting or running, Go. land or sea, the day striking a chord with lovers of the outdoors. I think it's just a really lovely Aussie spirit here. This is what we're all about. While in Sandy Bay, sunny weather made taking the boat out an irresistible choice as bodies and boards paddled too. We're having a great day. The weather's putting it on for us. We've had some fantastic rowing races. For 565 Tasmanians, today was the first taste of life as a citizen in their adopted home. The smiles say it all. Extremely happy because we really worked hard to get a citizenship. I feel more nervous than my wedding day. Yeah, um, yeah, just because I guess it's quite significant. Another Australia Day done and dusted, for some the first of many more to come. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmanian News. For many, Australia Day is not an event to celebrate. Thousands of protesters gathered across Tasmania for emotional Invasion Day rallies. Passionate activists today pleaded with governments to change the date as Hobart's protest march took over the city streets. A simple message. The streets of Hobart packed as an emotional protest wound its way through the city. Their voices ringing out loud and clear, pleading for the date of Australia Day to change. It really hurts. Um, I know my family right back to the time that the white people arrived here. And uh, we know many of them that suffered because of it. <laughs> The Invasion Day rally also a celebration of Aboriginal culture and history. A wreath laid to remember those past before a moving minute silence brought many to tears. It's a matter of respect. It's a matter of attempting to right the wrongs of the past. And it's a matter of acknowledging the, the really scarred and damaged history that we have. The date really does need to be changed so that Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people can come together and celebrate what it means to each of us to live in such a wonderful country like Australia. Organisers say each year the Invasion Day march grows and it won't stop until the day changes. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian Army reservists have spent their Australia Day assisting with recovery efforts on bushfire ravaged Kangaroo Island. Members have been on the island for just over a week, working alongside the State Emergency Service and National Parks as the mammoth clean-up effort continues. They've been responsible for clearing fire-damaged properties at the popular tourist destination. Their call-out is expected to continue into February. A citizenship ceremony with a difference took place this week as an Irish-born carpenter took his citizenship pledge in Antarctica. 
Michael Keating Kearney moved to Australia from Limerick in Ireland nearly nine years ago. The special event took place at the Casey Research Station and was officiated by Deputy Station Leader Justin Ross. It was attended by the 78 people currently working at Casey, which is located nearly three and a half thousand kilometres from Tasmania. In a bid to combat traffic congestion, commuters using public transport in the Greater Hobart area are being offered their journey for free if they board prior to 7am. Metro Tasmania is allowing passengers to travel on buses without charge on business days between January 28 and February 21. The company says it hopes the move will encourage people to consider using public transport to get to work instead of cars, especially towards the end of the school holidays. Further details and timetables are available on Metro's website. Tasmanian cycling sensation Richie Port has led a spirited climb up Wollonga Hill to claim overall victory in the Tour Down Under. His late charge wasn't enough to win the stage, although it did little to dampen his spirits as he pulled on the winner's jersey. For the second time in four years, Richie Port stands on the Tour Down Under podium, crowned the champion. The Tiger from Tasmania fending off rival challenges to finish overall winner of the Oka jersey. Look, I mean, it's been an incredible week. South African Daryl Impey had a two-second jump on Port to begin the final day. Whoever crosses the line first will take the win. But as the finish line drew closer and the climb became steeper, the king of Wollonga came into his own. Port now to the front. He knows he's got rid of Impey. The six-time stage winner did his best to shield the lead as Matthew Holmes went on the offensive. He's going to be challenged. It's Holmes. Holmes out to Holmes and that is an incredible result. The Englishman sprinting away to claim the stage victory. Port losing the micro battle, but the overall glory was his. He might have lost his crown as the absolute king of Wollonga, but he is tonight the absolute king of the Santos Tour Down Under. The euphoria of lifting the trophy going some way towards repairing the heartache of two second place finishes in the last two years. Could this win signal the start of a global reign in 2020? And maybe even a podium place in the Tour de France. Well, Garth Burley, seven in Tasmania News. Local track sprinter Jack Hale is off to a flying start in 2020, breaking a Tasmanian 100 metre record at the ACT Athletics Championships. He blitzed the field, crossing the line in a blistering personal best of 10.14 seconds, the world's fastest time so far this year. Good evening. Friendly beaches had the state's top temperature today with 28 degrees. The state's overnight minimum temperature was at Mount Wellington with 7 degrees. 23 in Hobart, a top of 24 in Launceston, 22 in Burnie and Devonport. St Helens reached 25, 22 at Mariah Island and Ouse, Smithton and Grove 21, Strawn 18 and a top of 16 in Liawini. Low level cloud lingering around the north and west of the state during the morning before clearing around midday. Mid level cloud remained around the rest of the state. Patchy clouds swept along the country's south coast with a moist onshore flow. Low cloud also extended along the New South Wales coast. Tomorrow shows a surface trough grazing off the west coast of Tasmania with another off the east coast and extending up into New South Wales. A high pressure system sits in the bite and a ridge dominates central Australia. West to northwesterly winds 10 to 20 knots reaching 30 knots in the southwest. Seas mostly 1 to 2 metres reaching 3 metres in the far south. There's a strong wind warning for the southwest coast. Tomorrow, cloudy and 22 in Hobart, 21 in Dover, possible showers and 22 in Ouse. Cloudy in Launceston, Devonport and Scottsdale. A top of 21 in Burnie, showers and 19 in Strawn, cloudy in Stanley. St Helens, Swansea and Ross all reaching 22 degrees. The UV reaching 10 and 11, which is very high and extreme. On Tuesday, showers in the west, fine elsewhere, fine apart from showers in the west during the morning and afternoon on Wednesday. And on Thursday, fine and hot. Very hot and sunny in Perth, 33 in Darwin, partly cloudy in Melbourne and 23, 36 in Canberra, a shower or two in Sydney and 28, Brisbane 31 and partly cloudy. And it's currently 19 in Hobart, Launceston partly cloudy in 21 and Devonport 19. And Tom, looking forward to your Australia Day barbecue tonight. Absolutely. Well, happy Australia Day, everyone. That is all your news for now. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great night.
Good job. 